Alhamdulillah. So, so Shekhah, what would you advise to Sister Malika, who asked that question, uh, how do we address family members who are hostile towards Islam, if it's my responsibility to introduce them to it? Yeah, I would say that uh, first and foremost is that you don't ever give up on them and that you recognize with involuntary relationships, meaning relationships that you simply can't get out of, like family members, is that you think of it as you think of it in relation to the long term. And I can relate to that. I really had no relationship with my father for about six years uh, after I became Muslim. Most of my family thought I was pretty crazy. My mom was kind of like the last link uh, to the family, uh, even though they didn't like kick me out of the house or anything, like sometimes happens with other people. But any time that I would get beyond like the weather and whatever's in the news, oh, it was not pretty uh, with my father especially. And um, now, alhamdulillah, he's a Muslim all these years later. Uh, my point is, is that things just take time. And my father actually did not open up to even talking about Islam until after September 11th in 2002 when he read an article about John Walker Lynn. And out of fear, because my name was John, his name was John, he was, went to UC Berkeley, I went to UC Berkeley, he was from Marin, Northern, uh, North Bay, in the Bay Area, I was from the South Bay, there's all these similarities. And he was, out of fear, he finally listened. And then that was kind of like the breakthrough conversation, and then one thing led to another. He was exposed to Muslims. And, you know, speak about being exposed to Muslims. He actually came to Yemen in the year 2003 when my daughter was born. And I actually didn't want him to come because I thought, oh, he's going to really embarrass me by how he's going to be with people. But it was, it was primarily meeting my teacher there, but then just other experiences where one of the biggest things that just completely shook his world in his preconceived notions was he was walking down the street dressed as a westerner he knows almost no arabic and this yemeni man comes out of his home and invites my father in and he probably doesn't look too much different than some of these in, in these images that we see of these angry that dark-skinned people from the southern arabian peninsula that hate america and everything that it stands for and are burning flags and stuff like that all the stuff that people see so my dad's like that's his preconceived notion of people that look like this and here it is that this person invites him into his home as like almost every muslim world would in the muslim world and then my dad doesn't know he just says abu yahya daughter mustafa like that's only like the only words he knows the father of yahya and the school that was called daughter mustafa and the man kind of brings him in serves him tea and that completely rocked my dad's world mm -hmm. is it like oh they don't it's so simple right they don't hate us they don't hate our values they don't hate our freedoms and all these like ridiculous tropes right uh, so it was just interactions like that that really started chipping away um and so i would say to you sister is that one don't ever give up on them is that this is this happened to the prophet himself him, the companions who came before us and people throughout history and then people even in our time and especially family members they oftentimes take a long time to come around so what i would say is be diligent and be steadfast in being good to them and just bear it if they ever insult you or criticize you or speak ill of you just just remain silent as hard as it is, as hard as it is and just be good to them and that sometimes you might need to separate yourself a little bit you might need to distance yourself a little bit uh that's fine but don't give up on them and be consistent and you'll be surprised as they go through their ups and downs. I've had family members where it wasn't until they'd been drinking and inebriated that anything good started to come out their mouth about Islam. We started to realize is that even though they're saying one thing outwardly, when the veil's lifted by a haram substance, then all of a sudden you start to see something of what they're actually really thinking inside. And I guarantee you, if you're upright in your religion, you will draw people to it and they'll see consistency and they'll see tranquility and they'll see themselves and the people around them going through problem after problem. And then it, you'll draw them over a period of time. Mm -hmm. And then any opportunity you have to clarify the reality of Islam, take that opportunity, but not in a way that is that unwise or that lacks tact. Uh, so that, that would be my advice and Allah give you strength inshallah ta'ala 
and uh, read the Quran with to I, I would do a, a reading of the Quran in English to look for verses that can help you with this because there's so many uh, about uh, prophets who came before us and what they experienced inshallah ta'ala